Uh, thank you so much for coming out today to see our panel on the art and story of the sex mankind divided. My name is Sasha, I'm the community manager on the game. Um, as you can see, we came in full force for this panel. So just gonna take a minute to introduce these guys. So first up, we have Elias Tufexis, Adam Jensen's actor. Hang on, I'm tweeting. <laughs> We have Jonathan Jacques Beltet, the executive art director on the game and the franchise. Hey guys, thanks for being here. Jason Dozois, narrative director on Mankind Divided. Hello. <laughs> and Patrick Fortier, gameplay director on Mankind Divided. Hi. Hello. So we have, we have a lot to show you and to talk about today. I believe Jason is up first for everything regarding story. Hey, that's me right there. Oh, look at you. I know. God. It's amazing who picked that picture. <laughs> All right. In Human Revolution, Adam was very reactive. Things were happening to him. And at the beginning of the game, he kind of, there's a huge attack at Seraph. A lot of the scientists are killed or are disappearing. And he's injured very badly. And after a few months, he comes back and they augment his entire body. So it's kind of like a superhero origin story to me in my head. And he's trying to unravel kind of what happened to him and what happened to Seraph in the first game. Um, at the end of that, uncovering, like John said, the Aug incident where millions and millions of people were killed. Now, the reaction to that, like John was saying, is that there's fear. In the first game, it was kind of awe. It was kind of like, look how wonderful this technology is going to be, and it's going to be great, and we're going to have all these wonderful things, and lives are going to be better. And now, after these people turn against other humans, now there's this kind of division that's, that's forming, and there's like a fear and apprehension. And as groups form like that uh, around the world, different things are happening. And in Prague, where the game is kind of centered now, there's, there's an even more a preview of what it would be like if they really segregate all these people and say, we're so afraid of these augmented people, they need to be put away and, and really controlled. Uh, if you switch the slide, please, Sasha. Here we go. Um, the approach that Jensen has now is more of a, it's action versus reaction. So he's proactively going after these people. He, he feels he knows the group that is responsible, not necessarily exactly who they are, but there, there's a group out there, the Illuminati, that they're responsible for, for this, and he wants to prevent it from happening, and he's willing to kind of do anything, whereas the tagline of the last game, as Elias has said several times, I never asked for this. <laughs> it's more about embracing what you've become, and, and that can go good or bad, especially how the game can play out, is that it's really up to the player. What does that mean? Are you going to really make things better? Or you can play and make things worse in the world, and it's totally supported. And what we're trying to do is make a, a really a wide range of, of moral choices that the players can make. You control the p pacing. I mean, you can not kill anyone in this game if you don't want to. You can stealth past everyone. There's minimal people you Even have to the talk bosses. to. Even, Even the bosses. bosses. You, you, you don't, don't want to kill the bosses. Kill you don't have to. Mm. Oh, look at everybody clapping for not killing people. I know. It's so rare in the... I know. And it, but it's so, so interesting, too, because building. normally it, it, it creates a lot of issues to solve because you need to find a way to make that work and, and, and to support it. And so that's a lot of challenges to make that happen. It's all right. The writers take care of that. Oh, yeah. So just fix that. Make, make it work. So there's a lot of making that work and supporting all these things. And it's easy to say, you know, choice and consequence, choice and consequence. But the further you go in the game, the more that spirals out and becomes yeah. this huge thing that most of, you know, somebody asked me at the last event we were at, you know, does it, does it bother you that people might miss something? Like, some, you can go in a section that, uh, that John was just playing. If you play that combat, you pull the trigger once, and it's like two months of my life just went away. Yeah. Like, you don't hear I think it. that's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Everyone thinks yeah, that's cool. You can do that. But it's the investment that's there. It, it's, it's really awesome. I went to a lot of panels th this week, and, and listening to people say writing is all about taking out stuff, taking out stuff. And we have so many different styles of writing going on that we have to add stuff. We have cutscenes like the trailer and things that you see that are, you know, cinematic style. But other things that are going in, it's all about creating that, I don't want to say fluff, but just people talking about what's going on in the world, or, and you can overhear their conversations and stealth past them. So if you're playing stealth, it's, you're getting more information about the world, you're getting more information that maybe it's going to help you find a different exploration path or, or do different things. So the choices and consequences... It's, it's a pretty uh, common formula. If you don't kill people, you'll probably gain more information. 
Yes. I mean, you know. <laughs> We're trying to it be inspired by life, you know? Yeah. Listen to people, and it'll be easier for it you. It usually works that way, you know? <laughs> if you're nice to people, you might learn stuff. <laughs> But uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like also we're, we're keeping tons of metrics, right, throughout the, the entire playthrough um, to, to get to the multiple endings, right? Uh, the different endings in Human Revolution were a little too uh, mechanics, right? Just pressing different buttons and choose your ending and then you, c you could even reload your, 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 your save and then try a different one but this time around. Oh, yeah. You definitely can't do that in this yeah, game. Cause yeah, because I think all the stuff that you're doing and how the player reacts to what you, you, you're writing and, and, and all that, there's like a little secret thing in the game that just registers what's, what you've what's done. What's awesome is the next slide talks exactly about that. Damn. That's, Let's that's, take a look. It's always <laughs> my fault. That was so natural. <laughs> um, here, basically, the play style, I was arguing slash talking to Pat today uh, about just different things. You know, people say, I want more combat in the game, I want more stealth, I want more of this. And you can really control your whole pacing and how you play and how you want to play. Some players go in and just almost never fight, never pick up any ammo. They just want to sneak around. And they call it, you know, there's some people at work that are like, they're ghost players. They have to have the way to ghost through. And sometimes you forget that aspect. And, and that ghost guy will be like, I have to be able to ghost to this level. You know it doesn't work. So you have to adjust those things uh, and, and really make it work. But right before the demo, just as an example of different ways of doing it, you can really uh, get to Rucker. There's a... You're supposed to meet some guy, but this guy's captured, and you have to go and get all these different people and find your way to get to where the demo started. And there's like six or seven different ways. You can stealth here and talk to this guy, knock out a cop, and talk all these different things. So it's really having all these different options to get to the next level. I don't want to hog all the time if we go to the next when, level. When Adam, when Chibi Adam comes like this, it's there's less and less time. To play it, lock it up. <laughs> That's what it means. All right. <laughs> So I'll just say one last thing, which is a little thread that nobody gets in the game here. This, this is in the game. If you win a conversation, it leads to an opportunity to do a task, which if you do the task correctly, unlocks a side quest, which if you complete will give you an extra information that helps you near the end of the game. So this is not something you can just reload and, and get it. And this is, I'm not going to tell you any details, obviously, but that is exactly in the game. And I don't even know how it works, how you guys pulled it off. Yeah, we just figured it out, but yeah. uh, it's pretty awesome. I had to talk a lot. That, that's what, a lot of talking. Lots yeah. of words. You had to talk a lot to make it work. Yeah. Patrick, yes. I believe you have some gameplay features you want to talk about. Yeah, there, there's not a lot of time left, so we'll, we'll go qu quickly through a few slides. I, I guess from a, from a game design point of view, the challenge is how do we, how do we translate all this new uh, embracement and empowerment of augmentations, all these themes, how do they come through to the players through the actual mechanics of the game? Um, so the very first thing we did, like before looking at what we're going to add and what's going to be different, it was like, how do we uh, really capitalize on the things that are already existing? How do we uh, make things really easily selectable for players? How do we make it that um, players can combine augmentations re really quickly on the fly? So we're exploring uh, selection wheels, you know, hold and release. Uh, we, we modified a little bit the, uh, the control schemes. Uh, obviously, we want to keep true to certain standards, you know, in terms of FPS. Uh, I think players expect, you know, the, the reload to be a certain, in a certain place, the, the, the iron sight, uh, things like that. So you, you don't have a lot of room to play around with. Um, but we, we tinkered with uh, some stuff, created some shortcuts, combinations of buttons, different ways of doing uh, the, the same things. Uh, and also uh, the, the way like the energy consumption uh, actually works to, to find the right balance between you know feeling empowered, being able to use these augmentations a lot, uh, but still having some limitation as well. You know it's always about the finding the right balance between you know overpowering uh, the game and, and then not being able to actually exploit all these all these cool features uh, that you have. So so even just using and selecting effectively uh, while you're playing like all the all the existing stuff from the from the previous game was uh, was paramount. Um, in terms of the new stuff, you want to switch slides. Like you, you saw a lot of these uh, augmentations already in, in the demo, so I won't describe all of them. Uh, but you know, the, the thought there really came from how do we uh, we, we see augmentations as as tools of expression for players. Uh, so we always think about them in terms of how do they combine 
two different play styles. You know, how does this same augmentation serve stealth and combat? Uh, how can you, you can use the nano blade uh, to pin someone uh, on the wall, but you could also use it to create a distraction away from, you know, where you want to go. Uh, you could use it that way, you know, so you could use it for stealth, you could use it for uh, lethal action or non-lethal action or, uh, it's all up to the players to, to decide how to do that. Uh, really interesting quick anecdote about the, the, the gun arms is actually uh, we, we started implementing them early on and it was the trailer that really helped define the vision for us. Like when we saw uh, the, some of the early stuff from the trailer, uh, it really inspired the, the design team of like, hey, wait a second, you know, everything is like choreographed so well and, and flows so well in the demo and that's really that's the vibe that we're going for. That's really how it should feel to, to, to play the, the new Adam Jensen. Um, how do we do? How do we do that more in our in our mechanics? And we actually went back and reviewed some stuff and uh, automated some some things. And uh, before you'd, you'd actually like put the gun away and equip a, a gun arm and walk around with the gun arm, and it, it just didn't feel. Uh, didn't feel quite natural. It's, it's funny that you say that, that the trailer, we kind of yeah, figured know, out that flow because obviously the trailer is done quite, you know, at, at, a, at a late stage, right? We don't do it at the beginning, so we should have figured these things out before. But it's, it's no, no, but it's true because in Human Revolution, it was the same thing. Yeah. The trailer kind of helped for, you know, that augmentation where the hand with Adam, Adam's hand gets uh, all big and you can grab someone and twist them. We, we didn't really want it in the game anymore because we thought it looked really weird and kind of a little cuckoo. But we still put it in a trailer because they kind of made it work in the trailer. And then we looked at it in the trailer and we're like, oh my god, this is really cool. And then we brought it back into the game. So it seems like trailers are a good thing. I can do that in real life, by the way. Yeah? Uh, yeah the so, hand thing? Yeah. Don't, don't take me off, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, Not for us, the experience of, uh, of playing Adam is also about, obviously, choice and consequences is a really fundamental pillar of... Uh, any uh, Deus Ex game, and, and you, you hit on this already, but um, e even right now, like we're still working on the game right now back in Montreal, and uh, every day, like we're in much to, to <laughs> the dismay and, 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 and the frustration, but not really of, of, of Jason and, and the narrative team. Uh, we still have ideas as we go around in the levels and, and we play around with little things, and we're like, hey, wait, what about, what about this? What if the player did that and found that? Uh, and, and we're not necessarily going to highlight everything for the, for the players. So some elements that, that are actually like um, story items that you're going to find, like we're not going to label them as such. Um, so players, maybe, maybe they're going to sell them because they can get a lot of money for it and not realize that, you know, near the end of the game that, you know, that this would have been a, a great thing to avoid a boss fight or, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, choose an alternate path or, 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 or something, something like that, like you know, that. have a, yeah, or something <laughs> completely <laughs> mysterious, but to, to, to do something else entirely, you know, uh, and, and there's a, there's a ton of little things like that, you know, that, that we're working out and, and that we're adding constantly as we, as we play through the game and as we iron it out. Uh, and, and some of the stuff that you were talking about, I find is interesting. It came out of a joke, you know, we're, we're doing a review one day, we're doing the blueprint of the game, and, and I think it was Mary was, was, was kidding about something, and we all stopped, and, and she's like, what's wrong? And we're like, <laughs> that's a fantastic idea. We have to put that in the game. And it's like, oh, really? How? <laughs> and, and, and we did, and, it, and it's actually a choice that you're going to do, like, maybe in the first hour of gameplay, uh, that might, you know, ultimately influence the, the, the ending that you end up getting. So it definitely won't be a, a question of just reloading the, the last save and it's, you're going to have to replay the, the whole game. Um, yeah, because, I mean, you could reload your last save, but it's going to be the same metrics. Right. You're going to get the same ending. <laughs> you're going to get the so, same, yeah. same result. Um, lastly, in, in terms of the, uh, the fundamental uh, uh, choice and consequence, um, comes from the way that the players choose, you know, pl to play like minute to minute, and and a lot of that is is the uh, the combat or, or or the stealth uh, and the social as well, you know, in there, and, <laughs> and uh, so we worked a lot on that, yeah, and uh, but not not you know because I, I know a lot of our uh, trailer and footage has been like a little combat centric, and, and players are a little worried about that. Uh, and, and really the idea was we, we worked on that pillar just to make it a fair choice, to make it as fun, you know, whether you go stealth or whether, whether you go combat, and to make it a true choice. Because uh, otherwise before we, we felt maybe it was a little stilted towards the, the stealth, uh, and even though we, we told you, you know, it's, we tell players it's all about choice, but 
you know, wink, wink, you know, you, you might want to do this more than that. And, and that's what we wanted to... Uh, we to are... Eliminate. Sorry to cut you off, Patrick. You are going to uh, skip to JJB Sports because oh, we're a oh, bit yeah. I'm pressed by time. The game sorry. is so much about gameplay. It's, it's, I think <laughs> it's fine, but... Well, I was done anyway, JGB. so... That <laughs> JGB. Yeah, it was done. <laughs> so, great graphics. Wow. Ooh. Oh, my God. Uh, tons of pixels. Uh, okay, so it's a new world order in a sense that, I mean, you know, like we said, the state of the world has changed entirely. So um, the whole cyber renaissance thing, that golden age of augmentation is over. Now what we have is what we call uh, uh, feudal, uh, the corporate feudalism, which is really the opposite, the other end of the spectrum. So um, the palette, the black and gold thing that represented the cyber renaissance is still there, but it's a lot diminished. Uh, the whole corporate feudalism thing is is a lot based on brutalist architecture movement. So it looks like fortifications, you know, 90 degrees angle, raw materials, raw wood, raw stone, raw concrete, all that kind of stuff. Um, the, it's a lot desaturated, uh, a lot more blues in, in the game now and whatnot. The black and gold is still there, but when it narratively, narratively sorry, makes sense, um, it takes place uh, <laughs> takes place in Europe, uh, in the city of Prague. But uh, yeah, um, it, thank you. So you, you've heard about the whole thing that Adam Jensen is a, a little bit of a double agent this time around. So we've kind of worked that into his clothing, and also uh, the clothing that he has now is corporate. It's not his personal clothing, like in Human Revolution. So it looks more like it's actually issued by Task Force Twenty Nine. We've worked with uh, Acronym, which is an amazing uh, kind of fashion garment kind of designer thing from Germany. Uh, we knew them already. They didn't know about us, though. But when we approached them, they, they made their research. They looked at what we did. They, they did their homework. They loved what we did. It was a great kind of, it was kind of cyberpunky what they did already. So uh, they designed Adam Jensen's uh, a jacket with us, obviously. So I'm super, super stoked about that. Um, the augmentations had to look very much like the ones in uh, uh, Human Revolution, but at the same time, it's a new game. You know, it's not like you bought entirely new arms, but um, there's differences, <laughs> but at the same time, it's very, it's very, uh, uh, it's very yeah, exactly. Well, you, I guess you could have. Uh, yeah, but it's very uh, similar at the same time. Uh, facial metrics and tech, what I mean by that is, since the beginning of the French, that, that, that we took the franchise eight years ago, it was very important that the character doesn't, live just through his costume. A lot of characters in video games, if you take away their costumes and you just keep the face, you don't know who that character is. I'm, I'm not going to name any games or any characters, but uh, it was very important for us that if you just put his face, you know that it's Adam Jensen. So doing a sequel and having a lot more means, because it's next gen, more polys, more and more and more everything, we could have gotten lost into that. And it was very, very important to me that the lines were almost exactly the same, just kind of more uh, realistic, I guess. Um, so uh, again, it's all about the details. That's something that we that we did a lot of in Human Revolution, but we were limited because of the tech. Now, uh, I mean, you're always limited, but there's a lot less limitation. So the clutter is completely insane this time around. Uh, the amount of details, right? The amount of like corporations, companies that we've invented, all the little tags and the little logos and everything, like all around you, uh, everything you pick up has a has a brand, has a tag, has something on it. Um, so yeah, brand labels, all that. Uh, hyper realism in the sense that it's a game that we're not trying to make it look photo realism. There's 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 a big difference. We're trying to make it look more than that, more than uh, just reality. So uh, with Titan Publishing, uh, uh, it's it's all about kind of like expanding the universe and bringing it to like different mediums. So there's going to be tons of books. There's going to be an art book. There's going to be novels written by uh, uh, James Swallow, a really good friend of mine, uh, who's written other stuff for us. Uh, it's going to kind of it's going to talk about the story of Adam between. Uh, Human Revolution and uh, Mankind Divided, like super cool stuff. It's going to be a great art book. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for a real, real art book uh, of uh, the Deus Ex universe. It's going to be almost 200 pages. It's going to be about Human Revolution. It's also going to be about uh, uh, Mankind Divided. Um, and uh, uh, what else? The graphic novel uh, as well. Comic books, graphic novel, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I just keep on seeing that stop sign. So uh, I, guess, I guess that sums it up. Yeah. Okay, so thank you guys. Sorry about the, the short time. Thank you. <laughs>